I was thirsty. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> it's just you guys make good beer here in Belgium. This tasting was a very good idea. Yeah. It's say Alex. Choo 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 choo. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm like three drinks in, I'm feeling good. Welcome to Pushanella Kella. For those who may be new here, my name is Alexandra Templeton and I am a group fitness coach and personal trainer based in Brussels, Belgium. However, for today's video, I have my work cut out for me as I've taken you here to one of Brussels' most famous bars to taste a few of Belgium's greatest beers and to learn a little bit about Belgian beer history. So let's go. All right, dear friends, this brings us to a little bit of a history lesson on beer. Beer is one of the most highly consumed beverages in the world, and it's definitely the most consumed alcoholic beverage in the world. Though excessive alcohol consumption is not recommended, especially here on my health and fitness based channel, beer and people have a long standing history. And beer was even used as a form of payment in ancient civilizations such as Egypt and Mesopotamia. Now, I'd be fooling myself and you if I claimed that this video was a one woman endeavor. I've collaborated with the Legends of Brussels to bring you the most accurate information on Belgian beer history. If you're planning a visit to the Belgian capital, I'd highly recommend you check out their page because they have many guided tours of the city and tastings of beer, chocolate, waffles, whatever your heart or stomach desires. I'll link to all information in the description box below. Now when it comes time to make beer, there are four elements required. The first is malt. Now this can be from any grain, such as rice, oat, wheat, but most often it's from barley. The second element is hops, and this gives the taste to your beer, and also its bitterness. The third element is water, which makes up 90-95% to 95 of the base of any beer that you drink. Even in a country like Belgium, where we're known for having highly alcoholic beer, it doesn't feel it, but I can tell it's quite strong. Yeah, it has 11.3%. I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, three drinks in, I'm feeling good. Water is still the base and makes up the majority of the drink. And the final element is yeast, which brings the party into the equation, turning the sugar into alcohol. Now, we have three types of beer that are categorized according to their fermentation process. High fermented beer, low fermented beer, and spontaneously fermented beer. So for highly fermented beers, those are fermented at a warmer temperature, thus making the process a little bit faster and results in an ale. This is also a spicier and fruitier beer. Low fermented beers are fermented at a cooler temperature and stored for a longer time and this results in a lager. Lager actually comes from the German word lagern, which means to store. But there is a place on earth where you don't need to add any yeast to ferment the beer because the yeast is naturally occurring in the air. Pretty cool. And that place is... Right here, in Brussels, in the valley of the Seine River, where the bacteria present in the air will spontaneously ferment your beer and result in something called a lambic beer. If you mix several ages of lambic beer, you get something called a goose. Goose, if my Dutch serves me well. And if you add a little bit of cherry, you get something called a kriek. If you find yourself in Belgium, you may want to try the Trappist beers, which are beers brewed by monks. There are currently 10 Trappist beers in the world, and five of those are brewed right here in Belgium. The five are Chimé, Oval, Rochefort, Westmal, Westlederen. Nailed it! All right, we've made it to the very fun part of today's video, the tasting. Beer number one we have is a Jubilère. It's a beautiful blonde color you can see here. It's, it looks really nice with a thick white foam at the top. It's a really good go-to beer for whatever you're eating. Smells like hops. Smells like beer. Getting notes of, of beer. <laughs> hops. No, it just smells very good. It's like a, like a go-to beer, as I said. It's hoppy. It's malty. It's a pills type beer. It's really good. It's 11 a.m. It's really... <laughs> this is the good life. We're living a good life. <laughs> Uh -huh. mm. So beer number two is a Creek Cantignon, which is a local cherry beer. As you can see, it's a really nice ruby red color with a light pink foam. Santé. I jumped the gun. I tasted it before I smelled, but it tastes very good. It smells like cherry. It smells like spring. Yeah, it's very cherry, sour, just a little bit, but also a little sweet. It's a little bit like cider. I imagine this one, great for like an outdoor barbecue. Something that you would have spring or summer with a burger, 
just like enjoying a long summer Belgian nights. If you do visit Belgium, I highly recommend you come around this time of year. Between April and September is really nice because the days get very long and makes for great fun to have a beer out in the garden. This tasting was a very good idea. Yeah. This cherry beer is a lambic. So remember we mentioned that lambic is, is the kind of beer that is spontaneously fermented. So you can only get this kind in this region because of the yeast present in the air. And if you add a little bit of cherry, you get the catignon. So the owner of the bar was so sweet, he just brought me sausages because I think he knows it's 11 a.m. and we're having a beer tasting. He's brought us a little something, a little aperitif to enjoy. How cute! <laughs> mm. Peace. Merci, monsieur. So beer number three is a triple carmelite, which is, as you can see, has a beautiful yellow slash orange, really golden hue, a thick white foam. And I don't know if we mentioned before, but each Belgian beer is assigned a specific glass to enhance its flavor profile. It smells happy, a little bit spicy. Mm. And we taste. Ooh, I like that one. I like that one. It's caramelly. It's a little bit fruity, a little spicy, some banana. Yeah, it's just very good. <laughs> it's just you guys make good beer here in Belgium. And a little bit of vanilla. Just a side note, some of the beers here in Belgium are quite high in alcohol content. And so even though they taste really good and they taste almost like a meal on their own because they have such a rich flavor profile, buyer beware, because the first year that I was living here, I made a goal to try as many Belgian beers as possible. And they are quite strong. It may feel very easy going down, but just beware after the second or third, you may have some rose colored glasses for the country, which is not a bad thing. So cheers. This is a very good beer. Highly recommend Triple Carmelite. <laughs> Oh, wow. So apparently, there was a man named Michael Jackson, not the one you're thinking of, but an American beer expert, also named Michael Jackson, who came to Brussels about 50 years ago, and he declared that this triple carmelite glass was the most elegant beer glass he had ever seen. I don't know if it's the beer talking, but I can't help but agree. Cheers, everybody. For me, personally, it's the best beer I've ever seen. Uh -huh. Mais j'adore les brunes. Donc, euh, Franchement, dis merci. Ok, we've saved the best for last. Our last one is Rochefort 10, Rochefort 10, which is a Trappist beer, and this one is brewed by monks. This one is a super dark brown with a thick layer of beige foam. You can smell a little bit of plum and cacao. And now to drink. No. It's sweet. It's a little bit caramely. It's very nice. It's quite a heavy beer. It's quite rich. It doesn't feel it, but I can tell it's quite strong. Yeah, it has 11.3%. We know that the monks also want to have a good time. They're also enjoying themselves. Mm. I don't know if you heard it, but when the very nice gentleman, the owner of the bar came to pour it, he said this is his favorite beer. We have indeed saved the best for last. All right, and that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you all so much for watching and for making it all the way here until the end. I really appreciate it. If you learned something today about Belgium or about Belgian beer culture, I would really appreciate if you dropped a like down below. It really helps support the channel. And stay tuned for future videos as this is going to be the first in a series I'm going to write here about Brussels, the Brussels series to come. But I've just been notified from my colleague here at the Legends of Brussels that it wouldn't be a beer video complete without a little cheers to you all. So thank you once again, and I'll see you back here next time. Santé, prost, ciao. Want to buy on lemon? There's no lemon. By monks. You're also feeling the beers. The five are Chimie, Rochefort, Oval, Westmal, and West. Lederen. Do I finish? I, mean, I guess I have to finish it, right? No, 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 try. No, 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 I have to finish it. No, he says I have to finish it. Okay. Mm. It's say Alex. Do, 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 do. I just wanted one more cheers and one more reason to drink a little bit of beer.